I have somebody that has a pain down in the lower part of their back, right in the middle of the lower part of their back. Okay. Who has pain right in the middle of the lower part of their back? Right over there. Go ahead and stand up. Is there pain right now? Go ahead and check it again. Is there still pain? It's gone now. Go ahead and go lay your hands on him and just continue blessing him and ministering him. Now, notice I didn't even pray for him. Why? Because it's faith that heals, not prayer that heals. What's your name? Hi, Jill. So you've never gotten a word of knowledge before, ever. This is my favorite. All right, what'd you get? I have pain shooting down my neck into my shoulder. On the right side? Pain shooting down the neck into the shoulder on the right side. Who has that? Right over there. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Look right at her as if you're talking to somebody who's doing what they're not supposed to do, but she's doing what she's supposed to do. But look right at her because something inside of her doing something that's not supposed to do and tell it to go. Go in Jesus' name. How do you feel? You can be honest. You know, if it's still hurting, be perfectly honest. It's feeling better? Is there a... Oh, Okay. Is there still pain? Oh, it's completely gone. Have you ever prayed for the sick before? You have. Have you ever seen them get healed? You don't remember. Okay. That's as good to me as saying no. (laughs) So praise God. I mean, look at that. So she's never, never before has she operated in a word of knowledge. And to her memory, she's never healed the sick before. It's pretty stinking easy. So, you know, when we look at someone like me and you're standing, I'm standing up here calling out words of knowledge and healing the sick, it's really not that big of a deal. It's basically an entry-level gift. (laughs) I mean, seriously. So if if, if it's easy to get saved, it's a whole lot easier to get healed. Who else, um, who else had a word of knowledge during that time, but you didn't raise your hand thinking that you should have raised your hand? Go ahead and come up here. You come up here and you come up here. I knew that happened. I was on the plane flying to Wales, and I get a word of knowledge for Holland, which I, where I was going next. And, uh, and I, I saw this pain, I saw this bump right in the back of the head, uh, and it was for when I was going to be Holland. I'm like, Lord, kind of odd timing. I'm going to Wales right now. I get to Holland, and I, and I call out this word. It's the first time I had ever gotten a word of knowledge before the meeting ever happened. So I'm excited because I had never gotten a word of knowledge for the meeting several days before the meeting. So I go there, and I have this word, and I'm calling, okay, who here? I saw it on the plane. I know someone here. You have a bump in the back of your head. Nobody. Okay, so who here heard of someone who has a bump in the back of their head? Who here knows what a bump in the back of your head is? And nobody is responding. And I'm just like, and I'm on this for like five minutes because I know what I saw. And um, nobody comes up. Finally, after the meeting, two people come up to me and say, I have a bump in the back of my head. I'm like, I'm going to punch you in the nose. I'm going to give you the bump in the front of your head, too. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, and here's the thing. I prayed for them, and neither one of them got healed. There is something that, it's not just because it makes us look bad, but there's something that happens when you don't respond to a word of knowledge right there on the spot. We both have a good friend named Will Matthews, and Bill was just telling me this story last night. Will Matthews called out this word like left ankle or something like that. The person didn't come up until after the meeting, and he was mad at her. And, um, you know, not, not like mad, like we're not going like, to reject you and throw you in jail. I mean, hear my heart in that. But he was like really upset because it made God look bad. And so, um, so he, he leans down, put his hand on her ankle and says, Lord, will you heal her now afterward? And apparently from what he said, he heard a reluctant, yes. Now, th- I don't know that God is going to be like highly disappointed in us or he's going to withhold certain things, but I do know that there is a time and a moment when the anointing is there and ready to heal on the spot. Okay? So, anyway, what is the word you got? Uh, well, I, I wasn't sure at all because this is very new to me, but I, um, I have pain on my left kneecap. It, it's, it, it's slight. It's not anything huge. Pain on the left kneecap, right there. Okay. And right there. How about you just go ahead and go pray for them real quick? Yeah, just go for it. All right. What did you get? 
um, I got some real tightness in the chest, and then I was having a hard time breathing. I'm actually still experiencing that. That may be another of that same word, but anybody else have that? Here's one thing that I've noticed. When I get a, a stronger pain or a longer lasting pain, then it's either a very significant healing the Lord wants to do, or there are many people who, who the Lord wants to heal. So I think it's interesting how two people essentially had the same thing. So how about you just go ahead and just go over there and uh, lay hands on her, and, um, and let's just go for that. All right, how are you? Good. What'd you get? Um, while you were talking before, I got the hiccups out of nowhere. So I was just hiccuping and hiccuping, and then um, when you said about the health thing and getting your pains, and there were pains next door, and you declared it. So I declared healing on whoever had heart murmur or heart palpitations, and it went away. It's gone. Really? So are hiccups tied to heart murmurs? Who has hiccups and heart murmurs? Who have a hiccuping heart murmur? You have a heart murmur. No hiccups. Well, heart murmur is kind of a hiccup. It's kind of. Anybody else have a heart murmur? All right. We're just going to get rid of this murmuring spirit. All right. So how about the three of you? Go right back over where she is. Yeah, right back over with her, and then you go ahead and go back there, and then um, just get them all healed and let us know the testimony. Shabba dabba dabba. How does this feel? You guys feeling good? It's fine. It's fine, huh? Yeah. So uh, who else has a word of knowledge? How about you right there in the white shirt? Go ahead and come up. Yeah, go ahead and come up. Both of you, actually. Okay. So um, do you guys like being put on the spot? Do you like being put on the spot? Not always? Okay. Who doesn't like being put on the spot? Yeah, how about you just come right up here? <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? What's your name? Anne Marie. Anne Marie. Wow. That's awesome. Do you live around here? I live in Framingham. In where? Framingham. Framingham, okay. Well, I live in California, so I don't have to worry about you uh, shooting me after this. Anyway, um, how about you just go ahead and call out, just say the first thing that comes to your mind that might deal with something with healing. Maybe even something that's uh, going wrong with somebody's body. Just the first thing that comes to your mind. Back pain. Back pain. Who here has back pain? Right over there. You just called out a word of knowledge. You, uh, do you have pain right now? Okay, so if you were to be healed right now, would you know it? Okay, go ahead and stand up. How would you know you're healed? Shaka. More Lord. Whoa, Shaba. What's your name, buddy? Hi, Jeff. Wow. Go ahead and check it. I think you're healed. I don't like a little bit of pain. A little bit of pain, go. I mean, unless you want a little bit. I mean, that's fine. If you're friends with it, I, I don't want to break up a good friendship. No, I'm glad. And, and you know what? Because it's people saying that you didn't get healed that makes me more credible. Believe it or not. Yeah. No, I, I know. 100% right now. You guys feel the glory? 100%. Wow. Shabba dabba dabba. In the name of Jesus, I release healing over that vertebrae. Whoa, shabba dabba dabba dabba. Wow. <laughs> Shaka. Shabba ba ba ba. Whoa, ha. Wow, wow. Just go ahead and like rest for a little bit and then we'll check in on you. Uh huh. How's it going? Okay. Good, good. What's your name? Uh, Don. Hi, Don. Have you operated in the Word of Knowledge before? Um, not quite sure. Not quite sure. Okay. And you know what? That's a good point there, too. Many of you are operating a word of knowledge. You don't even know it. Kind of like what I said earlier. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, that's just more rehashing of what I've already said, just different words. Um, how about you go ahead and tell us what you got? Okay. Uh, just I had a quick flash of left elbow uh, pain, and I also had a quick flash of kind of the rib, left rib area, some, something like that. All right. Left elbow, left rib. Maybe not even the same person. Maybe possibly two different. Who has a left elbow issue? Do you? All right. Do you have a left rib issue also? 
healed before he even gets to the service. Let me go ahead and go pray for him real quick. And it's just, it could be real quick. It'd just be like, pain go, or, you know, however, whatever you feel like. How's it going? Good. You have a real apostolic call in your life. Are you a businessman? You're a pastor. Wow. Have you ever had a, um, uh, uh, even a feel toward business in any way? No. No? Okay. I'm not. You have been. Really? Well, I just released that over you in the name of Jesus. Wow. I feel like you have a real, you, you, that things are just like really in order, that you have a real heart for order and setting things um, straight and stuff. And I feel like there's been a, um, just even a real work done in the leadership and that um, there's a great deal of uh, respect that's just kind of come across the board. And that out of that, God is raising you up to an even higher platform and stuff. So and I feel like there's real there's a, you know, of course, you'll, as a pastor, you'll talk about many different things, but there's a real word that the Lord has put in you that's like, this is what it's got to get across and stuff. So that's exciting. Yeah. So uh, what'd you get? This morning during the service time, and again, this afternoon, it was like a lock in your elbow. It wasn't really pain. It was just comforting, but it was locked up that it would get stiff and then pop. Stiffing and popping, locking and rocking, and a kind of mocking. Who has that? Who has kind of like this thing going? You right there in the pink? Awesome. Go ahead and stand up. In the name of Jesus, restoration to that elbow. Now, in Jesus' name, never to come back. Divine strength, divine health. In Jesus' name. Bring it back. Just bring it back. In Jesus' name. There you go. Stretch it out. Wow. That's awesome. That's so good. You know, it's like he's done this before. <laughs> you should be a pastor. <laughs> I was, uh, I was, um, and uh, where was I? Fresno, California. And uh, so I went for a walk. I'm sitting down at this park, and I sit on this bench, and some people had just gotten off a bus, and this lady sits about this far away from me. She looks over at me, and she goes, that's weird. I feel like I'm getting drunk. <laughs> so I start explaining to her about being drunk in the Holy Spirit and what that all is. And uh, this other guy comes walking up. I'm like, is your name Anthony? He goes, that's my middle name. And so I start prophesying over him. I'm prophesying over her. Finally, she looks at me. She goes, you should be a preacher. You know people. <laughs> Like, that's a good word. <laughs> so, anyway, what'd you get? I just got on the left arm. Left arm. A lot of things about left today. Don't be left out. <laughs> Who has something going on with your left arm? You do? Left shoulder? All right. The shoulder bone's connected to the arm bone, so. That you were getting left shoulder? Oh, okay. Wow. You have an issue also? And you have issue, you have issue, you have issue, a lot of issues. <laughs> so uh, just do just a corporate healing. All right. Father, you've revealed it so that your glory can be revealed. And so in the name of Jesus, we just infuse that arm that the strength of their life would not be kept in their hand, but in your hand. So raise them up and let that health shoot, Father, from the left to the right, and that you'd receive the glory in Jesus' name. All right, how do you guys feel? Show me if you feel better. Someone, you feel better? You feel a little bit better? I, I love a little bit. You feel a lot better? How about you two? A little bit? You don't feel any better at all? Okay. So how about you? To the lady in the black shirt and the really beautiful eyes and smile right there uh, who is raising her hand, how about you go ahead and go lay hands on her? And... Um, and you t I just command the rest of you right now, come into alignment. Complete range of motion in the name of Jesus. Complete range of motion in the name of Jesus. Wow. 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 Shabba dabba dabba dabba. In the back. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, in the back of my neck. Does anybody have anything in the back of their neck? Back of the neck. Right there. There you go. All right. Go whack. Whoa. 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 Oh. Right Jesus, I just pray that you would heal them all right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus, how do you feel? Not as much. A little stiffness, but not as much. So the, so the little go, we just command the rest of it to go in the name of Jesus. I would like somebody 
who has some issue with their body that's over 10 years? Why don't you go ahead and come up here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you too, yeah. In fact, everybody, everybody who has an issue over 10 years. I'm going to tell you guys my favorite healing testimony. And how many of you know that a lot of times story, testimonies actually show you the character of God so we can step into it even more? We can, we can actually learn something from a testimony. All right. For all of you are more than 10 years. Oh, this is going to be so much fun, guys. You guys feel the, the anticipation in the room? All right. Now, um, uh, before I do that, there's two reasons why I like word of knowledge and why I like healing. Because it's either going to work or it's not. I'm either right or I'm wrong when I call out a word. And the person either gets healed or they don't. I love that. I love that because there's so much accountability found in that. Okay. Now I'm going to share with you the story. Okay. This is one of the most radical st healing testimonies I've ever, I've ever been a part of. There's a lady by the name of Helen who came to my church a number of years ago when I was at a former church, former city. And she had lupus. In addition to having lupus, she could not bend forward any further than this. I don't know if that's a result of lupus or what, but that's a, I, I know that those two symptoms were going on. So, um, so many people, big people, little people, all kinds of anointings, all prayed for her, and she, wouldn't get, she couldn't get healed. It just nothing was happening. She came on a Wednesday night to the church. Only about 20 people left there that night, and she asked to see if I would heal her uh, and see if I would, I would pray for her. So, um, so I was like, okay. So I put my hand on her, and this is kind of what her countenance was like, just very down. Understandably so. Terminal disease, not getting healed. Your countenance, my countenance would be down as well. Okay? So I don't, um, I don't have any issues with that. So, but I, I was about to start praying for her. All of a sudden, I got this thought. You know what? I want you to begin picturing yourself as a queen. And I asked her, what would a queen feel like? What would a queen walk like? What would she talk like? Just begin to picture yourself as that. Her countenance began to come up. And she started getting like a goofy grin on her face, a little bit of a sway. And I was like, okay, what I, wa I want you to begin, I want you to lean forward now. So she starts leaning forward. She makes it down about this far before this starts being pain. It's like, stand back up. She stands back. I was like, picture yourself as a queen. How would you talk to people? How would you relate to people? How would you stand? How would you walk? How would you talk? I was like, do you feel that? She goes, I feel that. I was like, that's who you really are. That's what the cross of Christ did to you. This is your real self. I was like, go ahead and lean forward. She leans forward about this far. No pain. Stands back up. I'm like, picture yourself as a queen. Walked her through that whole process. Like, Do you feel that? She goes, I feel it. That's who you really are. This is your real self. This is what the cross of Christ did to you. She's like, I get it. So she starts going down, and the Holy Spirit falls on her so strong. Only one of two times this ever happened to me. I was blown back, both feet off the ground, flew back about five feet. I stand up, I turn around, I'm like, did you feel that? And she goes, yes, yes, I did. And she's touching the ground with no pain whatsoever. She goes into the doctor the following week to get the test done. The swelling in her brain went down 85%. She moves to Colorado. The doctors there finally write her off with a complete clean bill of health. She also was pregnant, and I didn't even know she was barren. Why? I didn't pray for her. She got a revelation of what the cross of Christ did to her. That testimony changed my life. Now, I want every one of you to picture yourself as whatever gender you happen to be, queen or king. Just begin to picture yourself as that. Even out here, just begin to picture yourself, king, queen. And this is who you really are. Some of you may feel like, feel, may think this feels a little weird, or maybe I'm being arrogant because I'm thinking so much of myself. Let me tell you a little bit something about pride and, and humility. It says in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, that Moses was the most humble man in the earth. How many of you know who wrote the book of Numbers? <laughs> Moses says of himself, I'm more humble than you are. So it's not pride to think something good of yourself. So I just release over you right now the anointing and the authority to know what Christ has done in you. Wow. And just breathe that in. Just breathe in that reality. Breathe in that goodness. 
Wow, Jesus. Jesus. You have done this to us. You have done this to us. Wow. Wow. All right, go ahead and check something out. Let's see how we're feeling. Do something you normally couldn't do. Something that would normally maybe, I don't want anyone hurting themselves, but I would like you to just kind of step into something you normally couldn't do. How are you feeling? Still tight, but it's a little bit better. Thank you, Lord. More of the reality of what you've done in her, God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. How are you doing? Still there? All right, all right. Just go back to that place that I'm stinking amazing because this is how God created me. David says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and that my soul knows very well. I won't go into the whole revelation of that, but really he's saying I'm pretty darn amazing. And he says, he doesn't just say that my soul knows or that my soul knows well. He says that my soul knows very well. He's saying I'm stinking amazing and I know it. Shaka ba 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 ba. Right now. Let's go ahead and have a couple people from the um from out here. Uh, just come up and lay your hands on a few of these people. With front, back, you know, whatever. You just 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 come lay your hands on these people. And these next few minutes, we're just going to see some really, really great healings. Here's the thing. It's, it's been there for 10 years or more. It's been there for 10 years or more. It's going to be very difficult without a supernatural invention to get our minds to think that it could, anything could be different. Okay? So a habit's formed after 30 days. Well, this has been going on for 10 years or more. Okay, so, um, so we just even release divine grace. You know what? I want every one of you to even stand as if you're royalty. And I'm telling you that royalty does not put their head down. How would you address a crowd? You're standing there receiving the medal of honor. So stand there like you deserve the medal of honor. Because this is what Christ did to you. He did not come for a weak bride. I release that right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Can you guys feel the intensity in the room? This is what happens when heaven, when, when earth agrees with what heaven says about it. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever you're praying with, let's go ahead and have them just check it, check it out. Let's try something out. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and wave at me if you're noticing improvement. We've got improvement there. Good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. How are you doing? Uh, not yet. What's going on? Thank you, Lord. And you know, when we are checking things out, we're not looking for what hasn't happened. We're looking for what has happened. Because you focus on what hasn't happened, then that grows. Does that make sense? So we're going to focus on what has happened. All right, how many of you are feeling something better? Let's, let's see what's going on right over here. What, you, so you're noticing some improvement. What were you noticing? The neck, my neck. I have problems with my disc in the neck. Okay. And, and, and what's getting better about it? I can move it freely. It's not painful anymore like it used to be. Wow, isn't that amazing? Issues with the neck. He's able to move it now without any, even really any pain. So we just say, thank you, God. Whoa, shaka baka baka more. More, 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 more. Wow. Ha, 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 Now, you were noticing a little bit of improvement. You said there was still some kind of stiffness. What was going on? Uh, osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis. Oh, bone spurs. Okay. And is it? Both. Both. Oh, and bone spurs. How are you doing now? A little better. A little better? Yeah. All right. All right. A little bit better. And so it's like bone spurs on the feet and the hip. All right. Can you just put your hand there? And I'm just going to, um, right now. In the name of Jesus, 
Release your glory. All right. How's that doing? Doing okay. Doing okay. All right. Awesome. Well, praise God. You know what? I want to share just a couple more quick things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Okay. More right now. Um, so let's go ahead and have um let let's go ahead and have everybody sit down again. Um if if you're still praying, that's fine. Um we can pray a little bit more later. There's a couple more things that I think are really, really important that I want to share. And um and I I think it could help us to operate in healing even more. Okay? So how many of you feel even even just a little bit more comfortable with the realm of word of knowledge? Okay? At least one step further to being comfortable to where we can walk in. That's awesome. That, that, I, I feel like I've, I've accomplished something. How many of you feel a lot better about it? Cool. All right. Yeah, we have, some, we have some people who are feeling better. Okay. How many of you have ever prayed for someone, they've been healed, but then they go away and all of a sudden they get the pain or the issue back? Or that's happened specifically to you? How many of that's happened to you? Okay. I want to share with you something really, really important about this concept. Okay. The thing, I always check in with people, how do you feel now, for a very specific reason. Because I need people to know that they started with an issue, and when we prayed for them, they no longer had that issue. There needs to be that clear distinction. Because here's the reality. When you stopped feeling that pain, you were healed. But remember what I was talking about a moment ago so, about word of knowledge, that when we get a, we'll, we'll experience a, a pain and we'll take it on in ourselves and then all of a sudden it becomes our own pain again. The same thing happens. If you can imagine that for whatever reason we happen to be in a fight with a defeated devil, I don't understand that. It's pretty dumb in my mind. But for whatever reason, he thinks he can still do something. So, but what he's going to do is try and convince you that you need to get what you've already got. It's what happened in the fall. He said, if you eat this fruit, you'll be like God. They already were like God. They were trying to get what they already got, it, meaning they were trying to obtain deity through their own works, putting them under a curse, Galatians chapter 3 or chapter 4. Okay? So when you try and get what you've already got, you actually come under a curse. So don't do that. If you experienced improvement in your body when you were being healed, you were healed. The Bible speaks of the fight, the good fight of faith. You see, there is no faith, there is no fight against the devil because the devil's been defeated. What is the fight? The fight is for the faith. We're going to fight for the faith. What is the faith? It's the, it's, the, it's the believing in what Christ has already done. So if you experienced, and I believe there's even people being healed as I'm sharing this right now. If you've experienced improvement know that you've experienced improvement. If you're having a hard time believing that, this is what you need. Before I got prayer, I felt this way. After I got prayer, I felt this way. There is the, there is the food to feed your faith. But if for whatever reason, some kind of pain or some issue comes back, you've got to go back to that place. I was experiencing pain, now I'm not. God did something. Does that make sense? Okay. How many of you want to walk in a greater dimension of operating in healing? Okay. How does somebody get healed? By faith. Notice that Jesus didn't, uh, as many of you guys said, he didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. Okay. So you have to determine what do you put faith in. Faith has to have an object. You have to have faith in something. Many people think they need more faith. Thus putting faith in their own faith. That's idolatry. Or they think they need to have more prayer meetings, thus putting their faith in their prayer meetings. What do you put faith in? The character of the goodness of God. Sickness is a result of what? The fall of man. Previous to Adam and Eve doing whatever Adam and Eve did, there was no sickness. Jesus did what? He came and he put us in an even greater place than what Adam and Eve were before they fell. He restored us. He came and stripped off. He became sickness that we would become health. He became sin that we would become righteous. He became impoverished that we would become rich. You've got to understand the transference of what happened on the cross. It's not possible to operate in a healing anointing with any kind of effectiveness without understanding what happened on the cross. You see people who do but they're not going to be effective for long. 
It is, is crucial. It is crucial. And I'm telling you that what the Lord is doing, what the Lord is doing in this time is he is revealing the revelation of the grace of God and the cross of Christ and what happened on that so we can actually step into a level of authority that no man can tear down. Because if you're trying, because if you think your healing anointing came because you prayed enough, then when you stop praying, when you go through a season where the Lord doesn't have you pray much, or that you go through a season where the Lord even takes your Bible away from you, then you're going to lose your healing anointing. The healing anointing does not come because you pray more, because you fast more, because you read your Bible more. If it did come from that, then you could lose it. But you can't. The truth is that the cross of Christ destroyed sickness. That is the truth. The truth is not that you came along and decided somebody wanted to be healed. God already decided that person needed to be healed. People say, well, why does God allow sickness? He didn't. That's why he died. He never allowed sickness. So don't allow sickness. Then why are people not healed? Because we don't yet understand the fullness of the reality of what we carry. Do you realize that Jesus healed them all? You and I are once again making Christ famous for healing them all. So right now in the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. I command your minds to be healed to proper thinking. To the reality of what Christ did. Not what your prayer meeting did. Have more prayer meetings. Have more Bible studies. Have more fasting times. But I'm telling you, it's what Christ did. What is the renewing of the mind? The renewing of the mind is that you find out who the heck you are. Then you will know the good, the true, and the perfect will of God. This is the truth. And I release that reality over you. That is how you'll walk in a greater healing anointing. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. Bill? Bill? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Woo. Put your hand on your own head. Got to release over this crowd today a, a, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Uh -huh. You got to get this because, listen, you're going to need instruction long after this conference is over. So God, let there be released over this crowd and just symbolically today over this region. We're standing for this region in a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. That's the umbrella you guys are standing under here today, what Jason's releasing in here. Wisdom and revelation. I declare over you that when you open the scriptures that you will see them through new eyes. That God's going to begin to re reveal to you things, not things that aren't there, but things that have always been there that you have never seen. And that God wants to release to you, uh, uh, the, to this generation, to peel back layers that he has never yet peeled back. <clears throat> to show us things that have always been hidden plainly right before our eyes. We'll wonder, how did we never see this before? So let it be in our day. Wisdom and revelation like we've never known, like we've never seen, being released all over this region, all over this building today. Now reach over and put a hand on somebody next to you. Pray the most dangerous prayer you can pray. More. Woo, yeah. Press in. A little bit more. Woo. <laughs>